welcome to Dapper Drams, where we taste and review whiskey to try to determine if the dram in our glass is indeed a Dapper Dram. Well, enough of that nonsense. This episode is going to be a little bit different than all of our previous episodes in that I won't actually be reviewing a whiskey. I know, blasphemy, right? But hear me out. It's nearly Christmas time and, well, I'd have a Santa suit on, but I don't have one. But what would Santa wear if he wasn't wearing a suit? Something red and white, I'm sure. So why not a good old Red Wings jersey? And hat. <laughs> anyway, it's nearly Christmas time, and the perfect bottle of whiskey can make a great gift for a friend or loved one. But what to buy? What would be the perfect gift? Well, go into any liquor store and there's seemingly endless options. Which one do you choose? Well, Dapper Drams is here to help you out with your conundrum. I'm going to be giving you my top picks for the best Irish, American, and Scottish whiskeys out there. I was going to give my recommendations on Japanese and Canadian whiskeys, but the availability of most Japanese whiskeys is hit or miss, so I didn't want to risk giving a recommendation and having, having you not be able to find it. And as far as my Canadian whiskey uh, recommendations go, I honestly don't have very much experience with Canadian whiskeys to give a wide range of options with that. So we'll stick with what I know, Irish, American, and Scottish whiskeys. Now, before I give my picks, I wanted to mention that I put several restrictions on the bottles that I decided to pick. First, it must be a bottle that is fairly ubiquitous. I could rattle off dozens of amazing whiskeys out there that you'll probably never be able to find either because of uh, lack of availability, rarity, or maybe it's only available in certain countries and not this one. Wouldn't be very fair to give a rec recommendation on a bottle you could never buy. Secondly is price. Again, there are whiskeys out there that would make you fall to your knees in olfactory ecstasy, but it would put you in the poorhouse at the same time. So let's keep things reasonable. Third is taste. If you knew that the bottle that you were buying was going to someone who loved Jack Daniels, well then buy them Jack Daniels. Go with what you know they love. But if you don't know what they love, you don't want to risk getting them something that they're going to hate. And then they'll go, oh yeah, well, I tried it and I didn't really like it, but eh, thanks anyway. And then it just sits on their shelf for another year and you look like someone who doesn't know anything about anything. So I'm going to keep things fairly friendly as far as the palate goes. No outrageous flavors, uh, especially like peat, which is a very controversial flavor. Most people don't seem to like it. Some do. And if you know that you're buying for a peat head, like myself, feel free to get something peated. But most people don't, so we'll stick to the more friendly options. And fourth, these must all be bottles that I personally have tried. I could go on and on about the, the great things that I've heard about this whiskey or that, but if I haven't tried it, I'm not going to recommend it. First up are my top three Irish whiskeys. First up is Jameson. Now everybody who drinks Irish whiskey has tried Jameson. Whether they like it or not, that's hard to say, but it would make a good gift. Now instead of recommending the standard version, which I have here, I would actually recommend the Caskmates version. Um, specifically the IPA, uh, IPA cask version. Um, it's a step above the standard version and it provides a more robust and exciting palette. And to top it off, it's only about $5 more than your standard version of Jameson and it should run you under $35. My next pick is the Teeling Small Batch. It's non-chill filtered natural color, 46% ABV finished in rum casks. Um, it's a pretty uh, decent Irish whiskey and all for around $35. And I think that would make uh, an excellent gift whiskey. My last pick for Irish whiskeys would be the Red Breast 12 year old. Now that bottle will run you honestly about double what the Jameson or the Teeling is going to run you. But uh, the sherry maturation that they use adds a pretty nice addition of flavors uh, and complexity above what the other two will give you. My first choice out of the three would be the Teeling, simply because you get a better value for money out of that one. But the Redbreast 
that would be the top one as far as the actual taste is concerned. Next up are the American whiskeys. I decided to break this up into two categories, above and below $40. First up for the quote-unquote budget picks, which would be under $40, would be Maker's Mark. It's a good choice for any bourbon fan, and the fact that uh, this is a weeded bourbon instead of a rye bourbon, or high rye bourbon, I should say, uh, is that the wheat adds a, a lighter profile, more fruity notes, less spicy notes than you would get with a rye, a, a high rye bourbon. And uh, it's, a, it's a really good choice uh, for about $30. Pretty solid there. Elijah Craig, 12-year-old, was the first bourbon that I fell in love with. Since that time, they've removed the 12-year age statement and simply gone with small batch, which is anywhere from 8 to 12 years old. It's 47% ABV, and it packs a bit of a punch. Uh, but big vanilla notes and plenty of complexity make this a great choice for any strong-flavored bourbon lovers. And uh, it's, it's available for around $30. The last of the budget picks is the Eagle Rare 10-year-old, which I actually reviewed back in Episode 3. This one is a little bit harder to find due to rising demand but I still see it on shelves in liquor stores and even grocery stores. And if you can find it in a grocery store, then how rare can it really be? Um, so a bit of searching and you should be able to find it. For around $35, it's a great choice. Anyone who knows bourbon knows Eagle Rare and it would make a great gift. And that is my top pick uh, of the budget bourbons. Now for the above 40 picks. First up is Angel's Envy Port Finished. This is a bourbon that's on the sweeter side due to its uh, port finishing, but it's no less enjoyable and would be appreciated by the novice and the journeyman alike. It's a bit on the pricier side for a bourbon, um, especially one without an age statement and at 43.3% ABV, but for around $55, it's worth it in my opinion. Next is the Four Roses Single Barrel Bourbon. This is one of my all-time favorite bourbons. Uh, but this is not for the novice drinker. It's bottled at 50% ABV, and it has some wonderful caramel and toffee notes, but it is on the spicier side. Uh, it's a bit intense because of the high ABV, and can be a little intimidating for someone who isn't previously initiated. Uh, it's a very solid choice for around $45. Last up for the above 40 category is not a bourbon, but in fact, it is a rye. Whipsaw Rye. This is a blended whiskey that is matured up to about seven years and then it is finished in French oak casks that were seasoned with Cabernet Sauvignon and Pinot Noir uh, wines. It has an amazing color, an amazing sweetness to it, but not overly sweet, and it's got a great complexity to it. It's just I wasn't expecting much when I tried it, but it really blew me away. And for $50, I think it's a great choice. And it would make a great gift for the whiskey drinker and the wine drinker alike. And this one takes away my top pick for the category. Last up are the Scotches, the king of whiskeys and the category that I know best. This was the hardest category for me to choose from because there are so many heavily peated whiskeys out there that I absolutely love. But as I said before, it's a pretty polarizing flavor uh, profile, so I decided to stay away from it. Also, there's so many out there that are just way too overpriced, so again, I decided to stay in the more budget-friendly area. Like the American whiskeys, I broke this up into two categories. This time, I went from the $50 to $100-ish range and a below $50-ish range. Uh, same rules apply as before, must be easy to find, must be palette friendly, must be wallet friendly, and must be one that I have already had. For the below 50 category, my first pick is the Monkey Shoulder Batch 27. This is a malt blend, meaning that only single malt whiskeys are used uh, to create this blend. Uh, the US version is bottled at 43% ABV, unlike the European version, which is 40%, so we get a little bonus there. And uh, it's a very fruity whiskey, very easy on the palate, great for someone who doesn't know a whole lot about whiskey, but it has enough for someone who does know a lot about whiskey to really enjoy it. I was very um, 
blown away by what I found out of this one. And it's quite reasonably priced for what you get at only around $35. Next up, we have the Glenn Farkless 12-year-old. Now this one breaks the 50-ish kind of rule in that, uh, at least here in Michigan, it's $53. But I do see it online from time to time below 50, so I figured I could throw it into the below 50 category and, and be safe on that one. Uh, it's 100% Oloroso Sherry matured. Uh, it has a great savory sweetness to it, and it's quite hard to beat for the price. Bottle at 43% ABV. Um, it uh, would be a nice gift for pretty much any Scotch whiskey lover. The last up for the quote-unquote budget Scotches is the Old Pulteney 12-year-old. Now, this may be the definition of a solid whiskey. It's fruity. It's sweet. It's savory. It's salty with just, just the barest hint of smoke. Not really a peat sensation, but just that little thread of smoke in the back that makes this whiskey all around uh, just wonderful. Uh, and for only $45, it's a no-brainer, and that makes it my top pick for the budget scotches. Now, for the $50 to $100-ish dollar bottles. First pick is the Quinta Rubin from Glenmorangie. They take their standard 10-year-old uh, expression, and finish it for two years in ruby port casks. Is it ruby port casks? It might be tawny port casks. Ruby, tawny, I don't remember. Anyway, it's finished for two years in port casks. And those additional two years add a wonderfully fruity, yet still spicy, um, still spicy whiskey. Uh, it's got some great balance to it and not a bad choice for around $60. Second pick is the Dalmore 12 year old. Now, Dalmore is known famously for being uh, a higher-end scotch, and uh, it's well-marketed as such. Um, but the 12-year-old is still reasonably priced um, at around $70, and it might not have the same majesty or mystique as its 18-year-old brother, uh, but this whiskey has a, a nice, easy drinking quality to it with some nice caramel uh, sweetness, and generally good flavors. Uh, so I would uh, absolutely recommend this particular bottle, not the 15-year-old. Um, I've heard bad things about it, and I've never tried it, so I can't re recommend it anyway, but I've heard, <laughs> from what I've heard, the 12-year-old is much better than the 15, so stick with the 12. My final pick for Scotch whiskey, price range $50 to $100-ish, as I'm sure many of you may have already guessed, is the Macallan 12-year-old sherry cask. Anyone who's ever heard the word Scotch whiskey has heard of two brands, Johnny Walker and Macallan. Now, I know a lot of people come down to Macallan for being overpriced for what you get, but when you're giving this as a gift, there might be no bigger status symbol than this juggernaut from Speyside. Uh, bottled at 43% ABV, there's lots of fruity sherry, plenty of wood spice on the palate, and enough hubris to go around. Uh, it's a great whiskey gift for the scotch drinker in your life, all for around $65 to $70, depending on where you're at. And just for fun and a little bit of a bonus, I figured I'd throw in my list of favorite peated scotches, uh, in case anyone out there is buying for someone who they know is a huge peat fan. Uh, for the lighter side of peat, there's nothing wrong with a Highland Park 12-year-old uh, for about $50. But if you want to go heavy peat, and if you're going peat, why not go all the way? Um, the Ardbeg 10 and Laphroaig 10 are excellent whiskeys, and you can find them very uh, regularly and affordably for around $50 to $55 each. The Lagavulin 16-year-old is a favorite of many, many Scotch drinkers, uh, including the famous Nick Offerman, who plays Ron Swanson on Parks and Rec. Uh, and that one is a bit on the pricier side at around $100. Um, but anyone who knows peated scotch knows Lagavulin 16 and would be very happy to receive a bottle. But my personal favorite of the uh, heavy peated uh, Scottish whiskeys would have to go to the Ardbeg Cory Vrecken. For around $90, you get one hell of a whiskey. Um, I believe it's bottled somewhere around... 57.1% ABV. I think that's right. And uh, it's amazingly complex and smoky. And my personal favorite for 
heavily peated scotches. Well, I hope this video was a big help for anyone out there considering giving the gift of whiskey this year. Um, if you have any picks that I didn't recommend that maybe you think would be a great idea, please post them below in the comments. Please try to follow the same rules. No unicorn bottles, no white whales, no crazy expensive bottles. Something you've tried, reasonably priced, easy to find, that you think would make a great gift. Well, that's all the time we have today. Please stay tuned for our next video, which will be a review video. And I have to say that um, what I have on deck is well worth the wait. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Dapper Drams. Mm -hmm.